Good afternoon, everyone. This is Audrey Russo, President and CEO of the Pittsburgh Technology Council. I, we're gonna wrap up the week having so much fun. We have a lot to pack in. We have Aradna Olafan. I'll formally introduce her in a moment as the President and CEO of Leadership Pittsburgh. Wanna give a shout out to deep appreciation as always to Huntington Bank for the work that they've done in supporting us for as long as they have. Jonathan Kirsting is with us as always. He's VP of Marketing and All Things Storytelling. And then, of course, we want to give recognition to 40 by 80. That's the wholly owned subsidiary of the Pittsburgh Tech Council. That's the latitude and longitude of Pittsburgh. And you're going to hear more about the work that we're doing in there, which includes apprenticeships. So we're very excited, as well as our support for entrepreneurs. So Listen, Jonathan's with us. He is going to keep his eye on the chat, make sure that if we have time for questions, you know, we will lob them over to Aradna Oliphant. So I am bringing to the forefront now our guest, Aradna Oliphant. She is someone who has been at the helm of Leadership Pittsburgh for quite a while. We're gonna find out a little bit about Aradna the woman not just the work that she does, because there's really a lot of magic in terms of who she is and how she has really brought a lot to our region. And sometimes people just don't know. So we use, I use this as an opportunity to let our guests show off, tell a little bit about how they're doing and how, how are you holding up during COVID, et cetera. So with, with that, please welcome Aradna, Aradna Oliphant. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Audrey. It's a, <clears throat> it's a pleasure and an honor to be with a friend. It is, friends, it is pretty cool, isn't it? We have, um, you have been at the helm of Leadership Pittsburgh for how long? Uh, over 15 years now. I stopped counting, you know, I, I think I'll be in front. I stopped counting. I think almost as long as, almost as long as you've been at the PCT. You're right. I, yeah, I stopped counting. I stopped counting yeah. too, right? We're just yeah. having too much fun. We are having too much fun and we are making, hopefully our graduates and your members are making a difference in the region and the community and, and the economy. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a joy. Well, how have you been holding up during COVID? Are there any big thoughts, anything that you just sort of want, you know, want to share? Because being a leader and doing the work that you do, you know, it's a lot of connecting with people, right? Yeah, it's, a, it's laughing. A, She's laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, as, as Brian Kennedy, who's one of, I mean, one of your uh, leadership uh, teammates and one of our wonderful alums knows we are, all of our programs are very high touch. That's mm -hmm. what distinguishes our program. Right. Programs. And so uh, it was uh, the first three, four months last spring were really difficult, really difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, but once those were passed, both for, uh, for Leadership Pittsburgh, as well as like you, Audrey, I'm, I'm involved with a lot of community stuff like this committee and that special task force and all of right. that, which is all a part of community leadership, um, they were, I'm sure you were being pulled into meetings and you know, and all of that kind of stuff. So it was hard. The first three, four months were very hard. Uh, and then it was, <laughs> it was almost like, okay, here's a new challenge. <laughs> How do we keep the spirit of excellence? You know, maybe because of the challenge. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. So what you know let's talk about leadership pittsburgh how long it's been around and what the focus of the work is sure thank you so leadership pittsburgh incorporated is uh sort of like the umbrella organization mm -hmm. of, of our programs we run several programs we've been around almost 39 years now we were created as a an idea out of the local chamber of commerce at that time when the leaders the the fathers of the city and yes they, they were, were men they were only fathers at that, <laughs> that time they weren't mothers right and uh so the fathers of the city at that time both for your i, I bet your audience knows that you and i both have a chip on our shoulder about 
women in leadership. Anyway, so uh, so at that time they uh, uh, they figured that the days of the old time very rich families were coming to pass where you know they're uh, one person I will not name the families all of us know the families one one so and so married the granddaughter of so and so and that's how the community spirit the wealth the economy got mm -hmm. uh, uh, got passed down and and they had a spirit of community right you can't you can't mm -hmm. take that away they, yes. they felt that they belonged to Pittsburgh but all of those generational changes were taking place plus the the steel demise had hit and so the fathers of the region uh, of fathers of the city at that time they they looked around the country and found this model called the community leadership model the idea there was to get the business sector folks to care about the community Hmm. So I say even today, my board members say that our job is not to get the tree huggers to hug trees tighter. Our job is to get the people who may not see the trees, may not definitely not the forest, to realize that there is this forest called community, this ecology called community, that their business depends on a solid community and the community depends on a solid connected business sector. So that's why we've got very strong business roots. We were created 38 years ago with the one program uh, called Leadership Pittsburgh, and then we've evolved. Well, so how many classes have there been? And tell us a little bit about Leadership Pittsburgh, because I, I don't want people to assume that they really understand unless they've been through the program. And I do know that you are still accepting applications, I think, until today. Is that correct? Actually, we are accepting applications. That's our senior leaders program. Uh, I think Brian Kennedy, when he went through it, was probably the youngest one <laughs> in his class. Uh, uh, but, uh, so, uh, yeah. And the, uh, so the senior leaders program, Leadership Pittsburgh, the application deadline is actually first Friday in June. Oh, in June. Today okay. is the application deadline for if you want like a $300 or $500 discount on tuition okay. after you've been accepted. And it's not an early acceptance, it's an early submission just to help facilitate Got the it. flow for, okay. from our end. Um, so Leadership Pittsburgh is all about community issues. And the idea there is that uh, these business sector leaders primarily, um, and by the way, I'm putting Highmark and, and UPMC and University of Pittsburgh and CMU and all of them in that sure. part. Uh, mm -hmm. So the economic generators. So let's take PNC Bank. You have Huntington. Let's take Huntington Bank. Huntington, uh, great bank, by the way, uh, great leadership too. And mm -hmm. Huntington, uh, an EVP or an SVP from Huntington would be a solid candidate for Leadership Pittsburgh, whereas a branch manager at Huntington would be a good candidate, might be a good candidate for our emerging young leaders program called LDI. So leadership, so LDI is uh, about skills within a community context. Leadership Pittsburgh is not about skills. Leadership Pittsburgh is about issues and public policy. So these are folks who have achieved a certain level of significance in their organization, in their own fields. And the idea is to connect their strengths and their organizational and community influence with the needs of the community to open their eyes, minds, and help them walk through doors that they may not have walked through before for the sake of the community. So I'll stop there about leadership Pittsburgh, but it's that level and it's about issues. Right. And so, and it's, and how long does the cohort run? It's a school year. It's so, school and they meet year. once a month around an issue of importance to the region. There is a leadership framework and there's a lot of peer coaching that goes on. Uh, so there's some leadership content, but the focus is on issues in that program. So I'm always blown away since, since I've been in my role at the Tech Council, how many people will say, and I just see someone put it out in the chat, Dan Griffin. Oh, I was, oh, in, yeah. I yes, was in leadership course. class 13. I was in leadership class 15. I still see my people or they run into people and go, we were in the same class. And the thing that's just 
you know, obviously there's cohesion that occurs, but the thing that's really fabulous about it is building relationships outside of your, your, your mm -hmm. internal work. Mm -hmm. That to me is mm -hmm. what makes this powerful is that it, it's not just inside the organization. And you know, Audrey, the, uh, once again, there is a concept called potent networks and I've written about it, but it's not my concept. It's someone from, uh, it was published first in the Harvard Business Review, not my article, the concept. And, you know, it's not about networks that get created because you bump into each other at a bar, nothing wrong with that, and you exchange a business card, but the potency of networks is you learn together for the sake of something else which is bigger than you. And that's, that's the spirit of the network. That's what binds these people together and they become friends. And you and I both know and through the work of the Technology Council, you know that networks make good things happen faster mm -hmm. or can make good things happen faster. Sometimes <laughs> they are not because sometimes they're evil networks right. and they can stop good things from happening. Mm -hmm. But the kinds of people who get selected to our Leadership Pittsburgh program wouldn't be attracted to our program if they were looking to do something evil. They, they, because we're a community leadership program. We talk about community issues. But so look at what Jonathan, why don't you read what Larry talks about? And Larry is also, um, I believe he's in a class. People are posting about different yeah. classes yeah. that they're in. So oh, Jonathan, wow. why don't you grab I this? I love seeing this and says, would love to uh, hear from you on what you see missing or is the greatest opportunity to amplify the Pittsburgh leadership development community as we emerge from this pandemic together. So I'll need to understand that question a little bit more yeah. before I assume that I understand what they are saying. Sure, yeah, I'll kind of go through it again here. So the idea is um, as we're emerging from this pandemic, is there an opportunity um, or, or a challenge that maybe that, that's facing us one or the other um, as we emerge when it comes to developing more leadership in the region as you guys have been doing obviously for years and years with. Uh, so what I do feel is that it's not just because of the pandemic, but we are a divided region. Mm -hmm. We are a divided country. Very much, yeah. And uh, so how do we uh, facilitate good, authentic conversations across the divide? If I keep talking only to Audrey who lives on the East End of Pittsburgh and I do not talk to my wonderful friends uh, in Butler County or Beaver County, mm -hmm. or I talk only to my nonprofit buddies because, because that's what we do, no change is gonna happen. And that adaptation across the boundaries and that, that's why I think adaptation coming out of the pandemic, if I, that's that skill has the need for that skill has become even sharper both internally as a leader as well as a community member crossing boundaries uh people call it agile learning and all of that you you, you know you can wordsmith those things but i think you got you got to learn to adapt and understand and that happens only through real conversations it and, does and not happen, happen through social media. I'm sorry. And it happens intentionally. You're talking about intentionality. Yes. And so I think that's part of the program for Leadership Pittsburgh. Number one is overall, it's been intentionality, but it's a really good reminder in terms of practice for us to make sure that we are reaching the whole region. And our region, if you look at all of Southwestern Pennsylvania is really quite diverse. And we think many of us who are in these roles think we know, but we just don't. We just don't That's know. One we of the just... things that I've had a chance to learn in terms of listening over this period of time that mm -hmm. we just really don't know. So mm -hmm. let's let's that sort of um, gets me into this next question because there are programs that you've done, like veterans. There's some new things that you have done, right? To to sort of broaden your reach. I mean, you even have a program that talks about on board and board matching. That's you know sort of helping. So can you talk about those? initiatives or those programs so people can get a sense of all the work that you do? 
Uh, thank you, Audrey, for that opportunity. So leadership, it's where we talked about the senior leaders program, which was why we were created initially. And that's why everyone says, oh, I, those who have gone through a pro, any of our programs say, I went through leadership, it's where that is only one of our programs. Our companion program is the Emerging Leaders Program Leadership Development Initiative, where the focus is on the word development. This is for the high potential stars within companies and organizations. And uh, we there we talk about skills as they uh, as they can benefit the person, the organization, and the community. So that, that's a skills focused. Our community leadership program uh, for veterans, CLCV. Um, is once again, it's not a leadership training program for veterans mm -hmm. because people would call me stupid if I started, you know, I stood up in front of the room and tried to teach military veterans leadership, right? So it's not right. about leadership. It's about how do they bring the leadership competencies that they developed within the military to the community because our community needs it and they feel disconnected with the community. Mm -hmm. They have been away serving our our country our needs mm -hmm. and even the god god's uh, women and god's men you know they work and then they and then they have their training so they're not connected to the community and they have this high desire to provide value but they find themselves struggling to provide value in big corporate america or even small small business America, because they have a high sense of purpose. So what CLCV does is connect that passion and the skills to our region. Wow. And that's what CLCV is about. That is really exciting. And so do the people, can you talk a little bit about the configuration of the cohort? Are they working in, in different settings? Are there any trends that you see? Is there anything that we can do across the tech community to help support those efforts? I would love, thank you for that offer, because as you all probably know, uh, military veterans have the, one of the highest rates of uh, business formation because they're very entrepreneurial. They mm -hmm. are not afraid to take risks. And so the chances are that there are uh, some young veterans in your post 9-11, our program is geared towards post 9-11 veterans, mm -hmm. that they are interested in learning more about the community and connecting into the community. We'd love to see their applications. It's a fully grant funded program. So the barrier to participation is very wow. low. And, um, and so, yes, we would love to see some applications. It's post 9-11, you asked about what are the trends we see. Actually, yeah. that's got the biggest variety of people of all of our programs. So there are students who are getting, you know, who are taking advantage of the, the, the grants through the military for education. And so they, there are students and there are PhDers, and there are uh, guards, women, and guardsmen, and there are people who are um, like a VP at a bank, but happen to be uh, a veteran, military, military veteran. So you could be currently serving as a guards person, or I mean, uh, um, you know, or be uh, have served in the military. It's or you could be like in the ROTC. And just doing temporary military work? Not a current student in the ROTC. Okay. okay, good. So if they go to the website that we've posted out there, is there information on the website yes. about this? Yes. Yes, okay. and I think that deadline is today. So if there's anyone listening, and if anyone is a member of the P of the Pittsburgh Technology Council and is interested, send a note to Audrey or Brian, and they'll send me a note, and we can talk about the flexibility in uh, in the deadline. So and so yeah. then, what if, so what about the onboard program and the board matching program? Talk about that one. So the leadership on board program is a companion or a successor program to our LDI, our young leaders program, as well as to our CLCV, our veterans program, whereby we place a certain number of select graduates of those two programs on area nonprofit boards in a guest capacity. So there's no fiduciary requirement. And the concept there is that our young people get to learn from the best 
about board governance. I don't know about you, Audrey, but when I first joined the board, I didn't have that. And I felt like an idiot. I mean, the uh, uh, what is this motion second? I had had no board training, you know? And I just sat there like, okay, am I supposed to speak? So this is meant for that to take away the hesitation. And then our region also complains, we don't get fresh blood. Here's the fresh blood. So if the technology council or rad Great. board or anyone wants to have a guest board member, um, these are highly trained people from different companies whom they can, re, you know, and then maybe, maybe the young people say, well, we are interested in the mission of homeless children's village. Right. And uh, we want to serve here and the company can invite them or not invite them. So that's leadership on board. Think about it as a guest placement. Leadership placement is completely different. And uh, we hope to invest a lot more into it in the coming years, whereby we place graduates off our leadership Pittsburgh program on area nonprofit boards. So any nonprofit organization which is looking for board members can reach out to us and say, hey, how do I get access to people who are graduating from our classes? I see your doggy at the back. So cute. Do you see a doggy in the back? Yeah, it's not your dog. And hopefully they're not actually barking, but you can see them. <laughs> Yeah. So did I answer your question, Audrey? Yeah, that's great. And so is there something called pop up Pittsburgh? Ah, yes, there is. It's yeah. actually the classes are uh, young uh, leaders class, our LDI class started uh, those. Uh, they're basically community impact projects focused on um, um, on a neighborhood in the region that is emerging. And through these community impact projects, the class of LDI, our young leaders class, um, tries to walk alongside that emerging neighborhood to showcase that neighborhood in a bright light or do something that is of significance to that neighborhood as a part of their LDI curriculum. So think of it as a live, living, breathing case study that they get to flex the leadership skills that they are learning about in the curriculum in a setting where they don't have a uh, positional authority. So no one has to listen to them. And that's where true leadership really emerges. Right, it's called influence, right? Yep, leadership. so that's that's leadership. A pop-up has, uh, the community impact project has taken the shape of pop-up in some years. So, yeah. so, so there is a question real quick from Chip Dockerty, Jonathan, you wanna grab that? Good question here too. Um, does a leadership Pittsburgh have a list of graduates um, that a board nominating committee could consult when doing due diligence on potential new board members? Our uh, list of our graduates is online, um, but you will have to any any company will have to contact us to say, and there's no charge for it. It's it's something that we do as a part of our mission de delivery, and then we will share it with some of our graduates. And mostly we uh, share it with our recent LP classes so they can reach out to us. So one of the things that I've really learned, you know, particularly during COVID is that the rural parts of Southwestern Pennsylvania and across all of America have really been overlooked, right? We've been wrestling with broadband and access and transportation, et cetera. How does Leadership Pittsburgh take its work beyond the borders of what you and I know in terms of Allegheny County? And even Butler County, how do we take it? How do you take it beyond that? Yeah. So do you have a peek into my vision uh, document? I don't know, but it's no, like you have. I a don't. <laughs> Where is it? Send it over. It's, it's not. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So that's another part of, um, um, I guess, expansion uh, that we are looking Great. at. Um, and, and we have, you know, we have some some ideas about that. But by the way, currently in our senior leaders class, we already have representation, good representation from Butler and from Westmoreland and from Washington County. So we are, but uh, what we are thinking about is a sort of a, a program beyond Leadership Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. So where people who are graduates of our pro, of Leadership Pittsburgh program and graduates of similarish programs from outside the uh, outside um, Allegheny County. Sorry, that's Tilly. Um, I'm going to mute myself. Why don't you? Mm -hmm. That's fine. We're used to dogs. I have two of them. People have heard them before. 
It's okay. So you're, you're, you're looking to extend that and I got a peek into what your vision is. So, so Rodna, do you remember when a whole bunch of us went to back in the day when we traveled? Do you remember when we went to Bilbao, Spain? You, yes, you can, you can't talk. You can, you can talk, you can go back on. You can't still, still barking. He can't. No, I was, I, no, Brian Kennedy had shut me up. He had had <laughs> heard enough of me. He wasn't letting me unmute so myself. What reflection, what <laughs> reflection do you have when we were in Bilbao? That there was so much similarity between what we could, what they were doing what what our potential was how do we build those connections when are you taking the next trip and and well you, you know me i always want to go somewhere and i can't believe that we haven't gone anywhere we where are we going next brian are we going on a on a trip where are we going glasgow with glasgow that's it Maybe. glasgow we might go to glasgow for cop 26 and i think that's in the fall Right, Brian? Okay, so we might go to Glasgow. So Rodna, that's the next That's the next trip. And one of the, I know Dan Griffin here, and the trip was an inspiration for Rad. There were a lot of things that we did. That to me was an example of Leadership Pittsburgh. We were all from different domains, different expertise, but the, we all had the objective of, of exploring what we could be doing better on and working on things both together and as well as things that are larger than than ourselves. So to me, it was amazing because yeah. the conversations and what we the relationships we forged were just so insanely positive. So Aradna, when are we going live? When are you going back to being uh, in real time? Uh, September is what our plan is. Nice. Okay. Yeah, and we are we are all you know we are we are real time. We are uh, synchronous. All of our programs are real time. They are not webcasts, uh, but in in person, if that's what you meant, mm -hmm. in person, uh, September. Sorry, I mean, yeah, face to face, mm -hmm. touching touching someone else. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, I mean. safely, 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 maybe not safely touching <laughs> someone else. So, Radna, as we wrap up, so, you know, you have been just been immersed in this whole work of leadership. And we heard you know, about your vision, about the work ahead. What, do you, what else do you want to say to all of us in terms of that you have the opportunity right now in terms of your work, in terms of the region, um, anything in terms of what you've learned? I know you've been passionate about inclusion and diversity and making sure that our voices are heard. Is there anything that you want to make sure that we all really know in terms of your work and the leadership that you've had? and continue hmm. to have. You are kind. I would I would talk more about the community and the work of the organization. The fragmentation we have across race, across gender, across age, across the regions, as, as you were pointing out, that has to be dealt with. Our region is, is continuing to fall behind. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd love to paint a very rosy picture of our region. The reality is that we have headwinds just in demographics. We cannot take this for granted. We cannot say, okay, come September, we'll all be outside and everything will be back to normal mm -hmm. and everything will be fine and we can go on as usual. No, we have to amp ourselves up even more than pre-pandemic. And how are we going to do it together? And we cannot do it together until we stop just yelling at each other, whomsoever we are, whatever our viewpoints may be. We have to listen. Not everyone is wrong all the time. Good point. Well, listen, on that note, I wanna thank you Thank you for your work. We put the link out there. Let people get connected. She is someone that is easy to reach. You can find her. She might be safe at home right now, but she is working diligently, pivoting the organization. She's worked relentlessly to keep the work forging ahead. So I want to thank Aradna Oliphant, my friend, my colleague, 
a woman who brings a lot of life to the work that she does and uh, really appreciate that. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Audrey, for this opportunity. Always great to see you. As they say, see you in the neighborhood. See you in the neighborhood. So Jonathan, what's in the neighborhood on Monday? Monday is going to be fantastic. We have Christina Casotas, who's the CEO of the Allegheny County Airport Authority, joining us for an update on all things around the modernization project, as well as all the new flights. And people are starting to fly again. So it feels like things are coming back. And she's going to give us the full update on Monday. That's great. Thank you again, Aradna. Thank you, all Leadership Pittsburgh grads who are all on this, this call. Everyone stay safe. Have an amazing weekend. Thank you, too.